Welcome to Astro Energy with Astrologer Angel Shelley Overton. Energy Show for March 22nd, 2016. I hope you're having a lovely day. I want to welcome you to the show. My name is Shelley Overton, and I'm an astrologer in Orlando, Florida. And you can get me there at astrologerangel.com if you so wish. So today, March 22nd, it's like the going into the third day of spring. Are you enjoying that? Are you having a nice time? I know that there is a lot of stuff going on in the world right now. And, um, you know, I definitely send out prayers and wishes for uh, peace to Brussels this morning. So, um, astrologically, we have some stuff going on. Not surprising. Um, Still, we have a couple planets in Pisces. We have the moon and Jupiter conjunct within five degrees right now. The moon just passed, moved moved past conjunction with Jupiter in Virgo, and Jupiter's at 16 retrograde, and the moon is at 21 Virgo. So, and uh, the moon also joined the north node right now within uh, 45 minutes of time, which is very, very quick. So, not too far off actual minutes when you talk with the moon, about the moon. And we have a square between the moon, Jupiter conjunction, and Saturn. So Saturn is in a fire sign, and of course the sun now is at two degrees of a fire sign. And interestingly, Mercury is at zero Aries in a fire sign now. So um, I don't know a whole lot about what happened in Brussels. I know that there were a couple bombs and quite a few people dead. But um, that's the energy coming in, that that strong, fiery uh aggressive, masculine, destructive energy. It doesn't mean that all energy of Aries is destructive because Aries actually does like to build and construct things because in a positive uh, Aries energy and vibration, they can put their strength and aggressive nature, uh, acting, when I say aggressive, I mean like, Um, there's an energy. It's a a gritty, resistant type of energy. It wants to exert against something. And if it isn't um, in some other way that's destructive and you can channel it into a positive expression, it would be building things with that that pounding and banging, which is like the hammer hitting the nail. So that's why there's a really strong connection to construction and construction workers with Aries energy. And so Mercury now is in Aries. Um, So Mercury is how we think about things, how we think about ourselves, what thoughts run through our heads, and how we communicate those thoughts to people. So just following up the Pisces energy, um, Pisces is the peaceful sign of the zodiac, the peace-loving nature. And then it expresses out into the world. So like the last degrees of Pisces are a lot like labor. And going into Aries is the birth of the new. So it's the birth of new people, the birth of new ideas, the birth of new situations, the birth of something. And so Mercury is at zero degrees, 55 minutes, and he's within two degrees of the sun, which is at two degrees Aries, 16 minutes. And then they're both in the same sign now as Uranus. And Uranus is also that expression of autonomy and the unusual, the unique, the eccentric, and also inventiveness. And as we have the sun move in, there is this need to... um, express the self so uranus in aries is a strong desire to express the self and as the sun continues on uh and when he gets to 19 or 20 depending on where uranus is when he gets to that part of the sky um it's going to infuse that energy that we've already been feeling that it's that strong energy of wanting to express upon the world the sense of who you are as an individual and the sun is only expressing that even more strongly when he gets on top of that degree. So that will be probably around the 10th of next month, the 10th of Aries. It'll be conjunct or right on that that energy. 
And then we have Mercury coming up in the sun, so that means we're going to act our our ego, the side of ourselves which wants to defend the physical body and the physical form and the interests of the physical form is ramping up and expressing. So, you know, of course, with Mercury and Aries conjunct the sun, this is a very strong point of saying things that we feel and that we want to get across without really strongly feeling anything for the consequences. And it can be destructive words and it can be even destructive actions as you know witnessed by news stories. Um, Mars is in Sagittarius at five degrees, so it's in trine. So right now, because the ruler of Aries is in positive aspect, it means they are acting in tandem. And as Mars gets closer to Saturn and Saturn retrogrades, there is this strong need to express this, for lack of a better word, a jihad. Because Saturn in Sagittarius is about taking ownership and responsibility for your systems of belief and your spiritual religion. And then Mars is acting out on it. So there's the idea of ownership of it and then the idea of acting out and expressing it in the physical realm, in the aggressive masculine, which is Mars, the ruler of Aries. And since Sun is now in Aries, Mercury in Aries, and they're at the same area of the sky uh, relative to Mars, they're at five degrees, I should say, um, same area of the sign. So they're in trine. They're working in tandem to get this expression across that, hey, I have a belief system, and now I want you to understand it, and I'm not going to just tell you about it. I'm going to do something about it. And that creates this really strong um, dynamic or paradigm of shift. And the shift comes with Jupiter in conjunct Uranus as well. And so look for even more of this kind of thing, the Brussels situation or any kind of physical exertion upon the environment in the name of religion to be happening even more strongly coming up um, right around. I'm going to look it up to find the exact day because... Um, that's a pretty significant time when the sun joins uh, Uranus because it's explosive. Oh, it's even earlier than I thought. So it's the 19th. So it's April 1st. Oh, excuse me, 19 degrees is April 1st. So let me double check that. I take it back. I was looking at Uranus. Uranus is at 19 now. It'll still be at 19 until the 2nd of April. Um, oh, okay. So Mars won't even get to that, but the sun will, and the sun will get there on the, let me see, 10th, just like I said. <laughs> what do you know? Okay, so the 10th of April, really strong day. And then also, because Mars is going retrograde, there's going to be this sense of I am stifled. And my view, my worldview is not getting expressed in the way that I want. So the 17th of April could, and also the week before, definitely because Mars is slowing down to go retrograde and he's at eight degrees and that means he will be within um, a couple degrees. Let's see. Mars is going to be in Sagittarius at eight and Uranus is at 19. Where is the sun? The sun will be at 19 on that day too. And then Mars will go retrograde. So they're going to be within 10 degrees on the 10th. But um, the movement of Mars retrograde is going to make a shift in action again. And because it's in Sagittarius, it's going to involve something in the Sagittarius realm. So that means foreign affairs. It means aggression. And it can also mean airplanes. So, And I know Mercury is getting ready to go retrograde coming up the end of April as well. And he will be in Taurus. But Mercury will be coming up on Uranus, which is also a very volatile time. And I want to tell you, Mercury will be at 19. It will be conjunct Uranus. So that is going to be an extremely strong week or weekend of um, having this energy around aggression, explosion, the unexpected, and electronics. So I wouldn't be surprised if there's some kind of, and I know, you know, with all the anonymous threats against Donald Trump, there's something going on probably percolating to be expressed around the time. So when Mercury goes retrograde, actually when it hits, so it's going to be the 19th, the Mercury will be conjunct uh, Uranus. 
and that's going to be 19th, 20th, and 21st, which is Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. So in about a month from now, we're going to have a really explosive week. Um, it's going to be a very aggressive week, and I'm just giving you a heads up for that because that's what the planets are aligning to do, and not because I really enjoy that at all. I don't. I just, you know, I, I do struggle in my show giving information about things that are not necessarily positive because I do want to keep it positive. But when you have the shadow nature of planets, positive and negative, I can't just ignore a negative side of things if it's going to be expressed because that's part of life on Earth. That's part of what we do. Although I do try to encourage people to look on the bright side of things when I see stuff in their charts. Um, Definitely I want you to be aware of some significant difficult times too. And so that being said, right now we also have some stress aspects between Venus and Saturn today along with Neptune conjunct Venus squaring Saturn and opposing Jupiter. So um, Neptune and, and Venus are both energies of desire. So Venus is um, a personal desire for things. Oh, I really like this or I like that or it's about beauty. It, it can be about shopping. It's the material world, material goods. Neptune is idealized love, idealized desire, dreams, your vision for the future. And it doesn't mean that you can't have it. It just means that you have to recognize that it's a higher dream for what you want. It's a higher vision. It's something that incorporates imagination and um, creative visualization. It can incorporate your dream life and the dreams you really have, or you can be um, dreaming in a daydream sense or even just drifting off and zoning out. Um, My daughter's birthday was yesterday, and she has a couple friends over. They're still over. And um, one of her friends was kind of looking off into the distance this morning, like, hello. And she's like, oh, I was just zoning out. So that can happen. And when you zone out, it's kind of like your mind is just taking a little breather from having to process all of the tangibles of the material world. So with that, I wrote down some notes of things I wanted to touch on for this show as well. And um, some of those are really, when I discuss this on the radio show, I do it a lot of times because I've experienced it throughout the week or throughout the month. I'm noticing these patterns and rhythms, and I'm like, well, I feel really drawn to expressing them and sharing them with you. So right now, um, I think that there's a stronger sense of anxiety going on, and there's actually a couple different things going on with that. Um, Definitely the Pisces-Virgo opposition between uh, Neptune, Venus, and Jupiter moon today and throughout this week and having approached with the full moon and everything, that's really strong. And so Virgo wants to have their ducks in a row. They want to have, they are, all the earth signs are rather controlling. And I think I would throw cancer into that as well. Um, but they they can be really controlling. But the reason they control is because they're so tuned into certain areas of material existence. So, They are the signs, the earth signs, that take ownership of the earth and take responsibility for how things happen on the earth plane in a physical, hard, tangible sense as opposed to a spiritual or emotional sense or in ideas, uh, which are the air, fire, and... um... Oh, see, I'm having a moment. (laughs) I'm blanking out on the fourth element. Earth, fire, water, air, water. I think I didn't say water. So, um, yeah, water, air, and fire were all the other areas, but the the earth signs really see it as their role in this world to make things happen in a tangible, pragmatic sense. So they can sometimes be myopic tunnel vision, have tunnel vision, and not really take into account ideas, um, individuality, emotions, because they're so highly focused in the material realm that they end up having to control things because they feel like it's their job to to take care of systems and details. And um, for a Taurus, it would be the material goods of the world. And so 
Virgo, because it's opposite Neptune and, Pi and the Pisces energy, is feeling like it's being undermined right now. So, and that's not me. I mean, I have a Virgo. I don't necessarily feel undermined because I have, thankfully, a Saturn in Pisces. So I definitely own the Pisces realm and understand that emotional, intuitive side of things. But if you're not someone who has a balanced chart with, you know, both signs in both or planets in both signs, then you could feel a little wonky, a little out of balance right now. And for Virgo, particularly being ruled by Gemini or not <laughs> Mercury, um, Gemini is ruled by Mercury too. My mind just went one step too far translating that. <laughs> anyway, because Virgo is ruled by Mercury, which is a very air energy in nature. It's a mental worry, worry, worry na nature. Um, Virgo is having a little more difficult time right now with feeling grounded and feeling like they're able to do the details and really manifest what they want to manifest and it for them it's work and it's being of service and it's it's directing people down the path of the details and knowing where everything is at all times so when you feel anxious right now you are being asked to go to the opposite energy which is pisces and there's a couple of oppositions going on right now which is why we're probably feeling extra anxious but mentally and emotionally and just cognizantly, um, definitely Jupiter retrograde is going to add to that. But the Jupiter opposition to Neptune Venus adds to that um, that feeling that you're not able to do the details like you would really like to, and you're not getting the information you might want to get to know how to proceed with the details. So it can be disconcerting, and you know you're kind of floating. So what you have to do is not resist it, which is where the stress comes from, but you have to balance it. So you go to your Pisces side, you go to the intuitive side, you go to the meditative side, and you go to uh, your inner voice and your inner nature. That's going to help you. So instead of fighting, which causes stress, which causes resistance and causes pain, you go to the side that's trying to get its voice heard. So... Um, that being said, we also have an opposition with the sun and the moon, or had, I should say, not had, <laughs> coming. So the moon is going into Libra. So we're going to have a full moon in Libra, and it's going to oppose the sun in Aries, which, again, um, Libra is an air sign, air energy, and that's thinking, that's thought, and it's the expression of mental energy, and in the sign of Libra, it's about relationships, and so the sun is in Aries wanting to be completely selfish right now and have its own needs met, which is what Aries nature is. It's It has to because it rules children, infants, who just come into this world and they have no choice but to scream and cry and throw tantrums to get their needs met. So anyway, um, let's see. I'm just trying to find for you the full moon here. And that's coming, I think, the 23rd. Yeah, it's a lunar eclipse at three degrees Libra. So that's going to probably come pretty early in the morning. I would say my calendar, the one I'm looking at, the part I'm looking at, I should say, does not say the exact time. But I do, oh, here is lunar eclipse, March 23rd, 747 a.m. Eastern Daylight. So fairly early in the morning, we'll have that energy and we'll start our day out that way. So that's in alignment with just going into work. So. If you're wondering, you know, oh, when is it going to hit? When am I going to feel it? It's going to be starting your day. You're going to feel that at the beginning of your day. And because it's a lunar eclipse and sun is in Aries, which is the assertive energy, that means the earth is covering the moon and causing a shadow over the emotions. So our, we're disconnected from our emotions. We're highly um, in our ego sense and not dealing with the nurturing side of ourselves, not dealing with that which... Moon in Libra is about building the relationship with other people, about building the connectedness and bonding. It's about dealing with the ego and the sense of self and having to get our needs met individually. And Mercury, unfortunately, being in Aries means accidents and aggressive nature of accidents. So it's going to be the carnage because it also rules um, blood and you know the head and blood. 
and it can rule knives, so there might be an incident with knives. I would believe that there's going to be probably a few different types of events going on, and they are uh, for us, for Americans, on foreign soil. But um, if you're listening to it, there will be an element of listening to this podcast or the broadcast that it will be something connected to you that relates to foreign interests, even if you are in a, a country other than America. So there's definitely a lot going on right now with exerting upon the environment the sense of self, and there's military connections to this because of the Virgo. Virgo rules um, the regiment of the military and that need to organize in a sense to exert. So, and there is a sense of being a service, so um, that's there. So it's serving the country. But all of the energy, energy right now is definitely creating this strong desire towards exerting. And there's a strong sense also with Pluto and Capricorn at 17. So it's in trying to the moon and Jupiter of trying to create a new structure. Pluto wants to change and shift. And so he's still at odds with people expressing themselves individually. He's wanting us to be a collective and do things the way we've always done it. And so there's that stress aspect on the Aries energy. So there's going to be resistance, and that's why there is upheaval with world events right now is because there's a resistance of authority, quote-unquote, seeming authority. Uh, When we own our own natures, then we don't have to express it and tell others, hey, this is who I am. We just own it, and then we act in alignment with it, in accordance with who we are, and we lose the resistance to having to tell people. When we put ourselves and express externally is when, so in other words, if we're trying to make others believe something, that's when we have to exert. That's when we have to go out into the environment and we try to change minds and we try to change opinions and we try and change the world externally. But really what it comes down to is changing internally. Once you're comfortable with yourself and at ease with yourself, then you can keep from having to do that, which is internal peace. So that being said, you can call in for a reading today. The number is 347-994-3365. If you do call in, which I see a few callers have called in, please do hit 1 on the keypad, and that will raise your hand or put up a little icon of a question mark and let me know that you would like a reading. So that being said, we're going to take our first caller. So our first caller is 817. Hi, 817. How are you, and who is this? This is Nancy, but I have a friend visiting from Chicago. I've had a reading uh-huh. with you before on the show, but she's never okay. had an, any astrology reading ever. So oh, really? Oh, my gosh. Wow. Well, no. that'll be exciting for us today. <laughs> so, Hi, Shelly. Uh, this is Debbie. Hi, Debbie. How are you? I'm fine, thanks. How are you? Okay. <laughs> I'm doing lovely. So um, real quick, just give me your birth information, and I'll put it in. We can read your chart for you. That's great. Born April 6, 1956. Okay. In Chicago. In Chicago. Okay. At 1:06 p.m. Okay. Hang on one second while I put it all in. And happy birthday, by the way. Thank you. Coming up here pretty quickly. Okay. So what and can I do for my, you? Oh, go ahead. Well, this, as you can tell, this is my big birthday, my 60th. And yes. um, I just wanted to know what you might see between now and my retirement or a little past my retirement. I'm hoping okay. to retire soon. I was just going <laughs> to ask you. By me. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Well, <laughs> definitely retirement's in your chart. I always look to the ninth house for retirement. Um, the ninth is the house that goes between uh, shifts and changes with commitment and then also career. So it's kind of a buffer house, and that's at the top of your chart. And I usually try and talk a little bit about astrology so I can teach as I go. So if you don't understand something I'm saying, just let me know, and I'll clarify it for you. Okay? Um, okay. Yeah, so right, I'm just looking at a few different things going on in your chart. You have a Leo rising, and what a Leo rising means is – when you're born, if you look to the eastern horizon or if, if someone who was adult <laughs> looked to the eastern horizon, um, <laughs> not not an infant, but um, 
you would see the <laughs> constellation or it would be in Western astrology. It's really just the part of the sky we've divided up to the different signs and it would be Leo. So that means that you express yourself to others in a Leo manner and other people see you very Leo nine. So um, gregarious, um, relational, you like to connect to people. You may be a storyteller. Um, you've got Jupiter in Leo and Pluto in Leo, which means at the time you were born, both those planets were right up there by the horizon when you were born. So um, that's pretty cool actually, because then that energy of Leo is very youthful and you probably have a really youthful nature you express yourself creatively and part of your life purpose is for shift and change and to move and to be on the go but to connect to people of other cultures because jupiter rules people of other cultures so you have this really strong connection between the planet Jupiter and Pluto because they're very close together when you were born. And Pluto is the energy of major life change. So for you, you may have experienced some kind of major life changes around 21 or 26 years old. Um, you know, you can think back on what happened then, but it may relate to children. Maybe that's when you became a parent or, you know, something happened regarding you know, that or even a leadership position happened more so a leadership, um, something that changed your world really strongly. Um, today, Mars is at five degrees Sagittarius, which falls in your house, a home, and family, and also on your Saturn, which rules your career. So, what's going on right now, though, is Mars is within two degrees of going backwards. And from our perspective, it just means at, on Earth, as we look at Mars, it appears to be going away from us, even though, of course, it's still moving forward in orbit. It just pulls its energy back as we go farther forward. So for the period it's retrograde, it will go back over your Saturn, and Saturn is your career. And for you, you've had a lot of career energy related to your family because the energy of your career is in your family house, and it's in Sagittarius, which means you really do want a certain amount of freedom you want to be able to go and go where you need to go and do it when you need to do it. But probably most of your life, there's been some type of restriction around family and your ability to just have freedom and do what you want to do. Does that sound right? That sounds right spot on. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, the reason is that Saturn, when it when you were born, Saturn was retrograde. And what happens when a planet like Saturn is retrograde when you're born is it means that your life purpose is kind of put on hold to an extent, and especially when it's in, when it's in early degrees of a sign. So Saturn at two degrees is very early. It just went into Sagittarius, and now it's already retrograding. So that means you've gotten a taste of the freedom, but then when it retrograded on the day of your birth, it said, no, you're not completely done with the energy from before, which is Scorpio. So Scorpio energy in your house, a home, and family means it's ruled by Pluto. It's very intense. It's dramatic. There may be situations in your home life as you were growing up and also throughout your adult life that seem to be depressing you or pulling you to the darker side of things, but Right now, with you're in a second Saturn return, the universe is allowing you to really get in touch with your happier nature and the side of you that does need to travel because that's your spirit. You really want to express this creative, fun, playful side, and your spirit is seeking this desperately. So with Saturn into the house of creativity, which is the fifth house, it's the very next house after your home and family house, it's saying, okay, now we're going to get into the playful side of things. Now you need to do more fun things. Yeah. And Mars is also <laughs> wanting to go there. It'll almost get there before you retrograde. And over the middle of the summer, you're going to have this retrograde back into Scorpio. Everybody will. But for you, it's going to affect some of the issues around home and family that you're wanting to uh, wrap up. You're really at the end cycle of all those deep, dark family issues and where you feel somehow uh, dragged down and pulled down by that deep energy. It's really, and I can tell you, knowing what this is like, because Saturn also did this at the end of last year. Saturn went into Sagittarius, then it retrograded back into Scorpio. And then we had we had a little brief taste of Saturn and Sagittarius, where it was like, oh, yay, fun, light, bright, you know, moving forward. And then he went back into Scorpio, and it's like, okay, now we got to wrap up these old issues around the emotions. And that was in around September. 
Um, let's okay. see, I'm going to tell you exactly. It actually started earlier last year, around um, April, May. And then over the summer, he was retrograde and he went back into Scorpio. So you felt it throughout the summer last year with the Saturn. Now you're going to feel it again for a final time with this energy um, in the near future. It won't happen again for quite a while. For Saturn won't get there again until 28 years from now. So you don't really have to worry too much about that. Yeah. But, um, yeah, but... Mars just wants you to know that they're, you're wrapping up those last emotional details so that you can move on. And it's kind of like, do you really want to go in this direction of happiness and playfulness and light and move on? And, and you'll get that last taste of like how it was with all those deep issues. And you'll be like, oh, heck yeah, I am so ready to move on. That's kind of the energy. It's like, I am done with this. Please stop bothering me with this. And then you can move on. And then when you move on, that's when uh, Mars goes direct. And I'll tell you when that is. I just have to grab my glasses here. So um, Mars goes retrograde from April 17th through the end of June, through the 28th of June. And then he goes direct again, and he gets back to Sagittarius in August. August, September is a huge time of finally moving on to everything that you've been envisioning for yourself, okay? So really, I would say if you're going to retire soon, I don't know if you have a date, but I would say probably August would be a great time to aim for because not only is Mars going to be on your Saturn, which is the culmination of a career and changing to a new energy, it is moving from your house of home and family into the house of play and, you know, for good. It's not retrograding anymore, and it's going to move on, and it's going to join Saturn, and that's taking the ownership for the new energy. So, you know, into September, and then um, there's another energy happening September 9th, and I should have it memorized. Oh, yeah, Jupiter goes into Libra then, which means there will be some romantic energy coming in and play and connectedness to a partner. And so I don't know if you're married or not, but that's a really – and it's also money for you because Jupiter's – going to be it's in your money house right now literally just went into your money house but he retrograded so it's probably a little bit of frugality going on right now for you and feeling like you're putting some of the money issues on hold but yeah. when he go he goes direct may 9th you want to write that that date down because when he goes direct he'll move forward again into your house of money and jupiter is the planet of expansion and fortune in your house of money i've got chills all over for this it's going to be bringing you some money then so from May okay. through September is a really fortunate time. And even going past that, because um, into around nine degrees of Libra, so Jupiter all the way through nine degrees is going to bring you money, which is October. So quite honestly, from that time, from um, when he goes direct my in hus- May. My hus- boom. Excuse Pardon me? me? My husband is Libra. I would just wanted to tell you my husband is a Libra. Oh, yeah? So you've been talking. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah, right on. Awesome. Yeah, so you're going to have a pretty fortunate year this year financially after the beginning of May. When Jupiter goes forward again, you'll be like, oh, thank goodness. Now, you know, I don't have to worry quite as much. The work, you're going to be really busy, and it's probably going to be wrapping up some issues around money and some things of service because Virgo, which is the sign on your house of money, is about frugality, but it's also about service. So what happens is, and this is a big thing that's been going on for the last year, as long as Jupiter's been in Virgo, it's been like, I just can't, this is my own personal view of it because I've had so many people also reinforce this. The Virgo energy has very much been about, I'll take care of you before me. And with Jupiter and Virgo, Jupiter wants to take care of itself. And that's what it's been doing to the Virgo side of things. So for you, you're like, I've done, I can't live without money anymore. I'm, I always give it away. I always do for others. I need it for myself now. And that energy is going to strengthen. I mean, it's probably already festering and has been for a little bit. And you you probably wanted to just like, okay, just leave me alone. I don't want to spend money. I just want to be back in my own little space, dealing with my own life and my desires. And then when Jupiter goes direct, you'll have a really strong handle on, you need to have the boundaries. I Here are my boundaries. And I love you. I'm generous because you have Jupiter in Leo and you have Pluto in Leo and you have a Leo rising. So you're a very generous person and you have a side of you that really can attract money pretty easily, especially when you put yourself out in the public eye. But um, you don't want to you don't want to uh, go overboard. That, that can be also the side that overspends. 
So yes. um yeah, that I know that uh, Yeah. So you probably have this energy of like Oh, spend, spend, spend. Oh, damn, what did I spend on? Oh, no, I have no money for this or that. Oh, I've got to pull in. So you have like this back and forth between the two energies where you want to be generous and then you want to hold back. And, yeah, and so that's that's going to or has been happening. But when Jupiter goes direct, which is May 9th, then he'll be moving forward through this energy, allowing you to move on with how you've been feeling, which is the need for freedom, having the boundaries, and then being able to do the work for money and not just give everything away. Um, Jupiter in Libra also has some of these issues because Libra is the sign of the social worker. You have Neptune at the end degrees of Libra, and that means that it's this, you have a very strong love of humanity and love to help people with ideas, and mm-hmm. you want to tell them about your ideas to balance and to be um, – peaceful and in in balance so when jupiter gets to libra it's going to be about thoughts it's going to be about words it's going to be about partnership and you're going to want to express things in the partnership that'll be your focus um after october you're going to start actually i think the, the beginning of september and moving into libra it's going to be about that it's going to be about relationships and relating giving the ideas and having to work on relationship issues because right now virgo is very self-fulfilled you know virgo is a worker and they love to do tasks and they can be alone very easily they're the hermit of the zodiac and so that that's the energy jupiter's in right now but when he gets to libra it's going to be about okay how do we balance things now how do i pay attention to partner and what do i need to do to express myself and get those needs met and really have a strong sense of self within the relationship which is going to be an ongoing thing very strongly for the next couple years for you. Good. Okay. Okay. That's do you have any, wonderful. Yeah. Do you have any other questions? Um, not really. But the, my only other question was it was very exciting when you said that um, coming up soon around August would be a good time for retirement, but unfortunately, since I'm 60, Oh, wait, but there's that abundance of money coming. <laughs> yeah. I'm thinking I'm going to have to work for another five years. And uh-huh. yeah, my workplace is very, very stressful. I have friends, but what I actually do, I'm a legal secretary, so that's not very fulfilling anymore. Right. You know, once yeah. in a time it was, now I'm done working. I'm tired of making other people rich. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, so that was the – but. You know, if I come into an abundance of money, then I can retire early maybe, right? Well, I think and that you probably – I would think you are going to retire early. And, yeah, I don't see it going five years. I can guarantee it won't go five years. I'm thinking more um, looking at your planets. You've got Neptune, which is your dreams and desires. It's in your house of marriage and partnership right now, but it will be going into commitment, which also is the house, the eighth house, is not only commitment to marriage and partner, but it is also legalities and legal issues, and probably because of your career, um, your career, um, because of the legal side of it, legal aspect of it. When Neptune goes into that house, which is January of 2018, um, that's going to be a strong shift of your ide- ideology, the way you look at that position and how you look at it. Um, Tune has a way of making things transition. <laughs> so I would say probably... If, at the latest, it would be around 2018. Okay. Yeah, and on top, me. on top, yeah, <laughs> on top of that, uh, the planet Uranus is going to be almost into your house of career, and Uranus has made your life change as well. It, it changes unexpectedly, and um, let me just see when that directly hits in there because it's going to be yeah it's the same time. So I would tell you probably 2018 is the year that you're going to retire. Okay. Well, that's a relief. Yep. That's something to look forward to. That, yeah. And then when you were talking about my um, my husband, um, he's set, he's 65. He's semi-retired. He's collecting uh-huh. Social Security, but he's still working. And, okay. um, you know, I, I carry the health insurance for the family, so he sees uh-huh. me working till forever, you know. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I don't think so because, uh, again, Neptune is bringing in an ideal situation. That's what it does. It 
gives you the dream. And moving into the, in the eighth house, which is where it's moving into in 2018, is the house of joint finances. And so it's it's also it's about money and the fluidity of money and the spiritual side of money. So it's about having faith. And, you know, that's a huge part of where it is right now and what's going on right now astrologically is that for you, okay, let me back up. Virgo and Pisces are opposite each other in the zodiac. They are triggering, Virgo's triggering your house of personal finance and Pisces is triggering your house of joint finance. So, and also your marriage, but the energy is how to have faith and not worry so much because Virgo's the worry energy and Pisces is the allowing energy. So, what Pisces wants us all to do is know that it's going to be okay and connect into our spiritual side and really listen to intuition. Listen to where spirit is asking us to go and how to handle those situations. So if you're really tuned in, you'll be like, you know, I think I want to, and this is an example. This is not telling you what to do. Um, I want to sell my stocks because I feel like right now the stock market is kind of flatlining and maybe I need to put it into, um, you know, stocks and not stocks um bonds or you know houses or you know whatever so you, mm-hmm. if you get the inkling follow through with it because what happens is if you don't listen the first time it gets stronger so if you start get a nagging feeling like you really need to do something then do that <laughs> because that's spirit talking to you and that's what this energy is right now is spirits coming through stronger and wants to really guide okay does that make sense okay that does make sense yeah, and that's that's great. I've been thinking about my four hundred one k and now uh, and all of that because I get that through work. So uh-huh. that again, right on. So nice. And maybe you're gonna move somewhere where you can get cheaper insurance, so the work won't affect <laughs> five years. Right. It could be a well, new housing. I, you don't move. There is some energy around moving in your chart. I mean, I would have said when Saturn went from your house of home and family and your Saturn return was um, the end of last year, you would have moved at that point because Saturn going over the home and family house into the next house always creates a shift. And it creates this, first off, Saturn going over that cusp would create a shift in structure of the home life. Secondarily, because it's in Sagittarius, it also rules selling a home and real estate. And so you have a strong energy around it. So it kind of surprises me that you haven't done something with that. But um, there is a square going on between Saturn and the Pisces and the Virgo energy right now. So there's probably difference of opinion around it. And that's probably what's keeping it from actually manifesting. But I do think that by the time Mars goes direct, I wouldn't be surprised if you decide to move at that point wherever it can be, even if it's local, um, because Mars takes action. And Saturn already said, hey, this has to change. The structure isn't where you need to be. And then Mars says, okay, now we're off to the races. We're going. So it could happen. Okay. Well, I'll keep that in mind. I haven't really thought about moving other than once I retire half of the year, Coming to uh-huh. see my friends in Arkansas. Right. <laughs> well, at, and then, at the, uh-huh. go ahead. Sorry. No, go, no, I was going to say, and then stay in Chicago in the summer because it's a great place to be in the summer. But I am sick uh-huh. of the winters. I'd like to get out of there for half of the year. Yeah, true. Well, um, definitely, you've got some energy going on that will allow you to uh, move if you choose to. But at the very least, take trips. So you might be in alignment for a trip coming up here, um, probably July, July into August. So, you know, that trip, you could end up doing like a reconnaissance trip and maybe finding something you want to buy. And by then, Jupiter is almost going direct. So when Jupiter goes direct, Jupiter again rules Sagittarius, which is the ruler of real estate. So having Jupiter direct in your house of money and property, money, possessions, and property, I wouldn't be surprised if you decide to buy something. It may not be an actual physical move, but definitely having a real estate purchase could be in the cards as well. Nice. Okay. All right. Yeah. So that's pretty exciting. Yeah. It's a, it's a so, very, um, it's a nice future for me to dream about and try and manifest. 
Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty cool. I mean, it seems like a lot of good things, but there's a lot of change, you know, that's just part of life on earth, <laughs> having to go right, through the differences. Right. Um, but yeah, anyway, you know, there's, there's a lot going on. So, you know, we'll, well, we'll get there. We are supposed to go to Canada in July, so maybe we're supposed to all move to Canada. It depends on who gets elected. <laughs> I know. Oh, he's not. He's not, because we're all going to go and vote in the, against him. <laughs> So That's, gonna, right. That's right. That's right. Anybody. Yeah. Anybody. Anybody and everybody. Exactly. <laughs> Thanks, Shelly. I'm glad we got through. And she was just visiting with her husband and son for a few days. And I said, oh, we got to call in. Maybe you'll get a Oh, Awesome. Well, um, you know, I don't have a lot of callers wanting to get on. If you want me to um, do a reading for you, I can do that, too. Awesome. Well, I, yeah, I've called in before with, you know, I'm uh, Nancy and I'm March 29th. Uh-huh. My birthday is coming up, too. Yeah, and happy birthday. Legal, thank you. We have a mediation next week on my birthday to hopefully finalize that thing that we've been going through. Is for that crazy years. lady? The crazy lady? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, and you said that comes up what day? It's supposed to be Wednesday. No, next Tuesday, the 29th on my birthday. Oh, it's yeah. It's supposed to be wow. earlier in the month, and they postponed it. And it's a mediation with a judge and her side and our side. And we're hoping it's the end of it all. You know, that we yeah. make a decision and close and we can let that go and move on. You know, we're thinking of buying a piece of property that's in the country, just about 20 minutes out of town. Beautiful. A cabin with, with some rental properties involved. And so that is contingent on, you know, getting this over with and having our money back. That's what we're thinking. Right. So. Right. So let me just look real quick again at that whole chart for you. Okay. Um, well, Jupiter's going to be up there in that house. It's retrograde, which, you know, it also can indicate a situation you've been going through that you've had to go mm-hmm. back over. Um, definitely when Jupiter goes direct in May, I think that that's when the whole thing will shift. So uh, you could potentially get that all wrapped up and then may not see that. I may have told you this before. You may have the money come when Jupiter crosses your Pluto, which is the major life change in joint finances and work, too. So, um, and I'm trying to see where the moon is. The moon is in Sagittarius, then, in Saturn, next to Saturn, literally, almost the same degree. It's one degree off of Saturn, which is um, money from career. And so uh, Jupiter is also moving on. It's, or excuse me, the Sagittarius energy is moving on. Hang on a second. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it is. I can see the whole situation with her too in this um, because Jupiter squares Saturn that day. And um, so I'm just give me a second to really kind of get the vibe of what's going on in a couple other places here. I think I think it's a fight, obviously, but it, there could be some contention. Spoke. I think that Mercury is going to be right there near your Sun, and everything's in Aries, or Uranus, Mercury, and Sun, and that, and it's in the house of communications for you. So I think that some words are going to be said on that day, honestly. But <laughs> it's also um, Venus. Where's Venus? Venus is in Pisces in your house of money, and that's the woman. And then you also have. Um, Vesta, which is the nasty person uh, connected to your home situation. So there's definitely, I think her energy is kind of connected to that somehow. Mm-hmm. I'm trying well, to figure out a good what friend she, of her. Oh, okay. Yeah, because there's like... She, to not be, yeah. Well, she's, she's, I mean, I know that you're saying that she's kind of a little loony, a little bit. I yeah. mean, she obviously has her own agenda. And the it's energy nice. of of um, aggressiveness, aggr- the, the kind of shrew energy, so to speak, is in the house of home and family for you. So there's something around that, like it connects to the peace of mind of your home life. And I'm just trying to see the numbers and everything. I just, I want to tell you it's going to be good. I see, I see that there is definitely a moving on. And I think that um, you have Mars in your house of money from career, which means taking action. And um, generally, you're acting on your own behalf, and I think that you're asserting yourself in a positive manner. I mean, in a, let me—I wouldn't 
let me back up. It isn't positive in a sense of like, oh, you're happy and loving. It's positive meaning you're standing up for yourself, okay? And I think that's what's going to drive a resolution on this. Is you don't let her. Well, we're happy to have an actual judge, a retired judge, as the mediator. It's not just some right. person that doesn't know the law. We right. feel that she's she has to hear it from someone of authority because she's not going to listen to us. Yeah. You know, so I think it was a, a positive thing that it was agreed to do on, uh, and it was supposed to have been done earlier this month, and it was postponed on my birthday. And I have been saying for two years that. I will be celebrating my birthday with the win of this lawsuit, and I've been repeating that yeah. over and over again. I've sort of been saying I'll be on a cruise celebrating the yeah. win of my lawsuit <laughs> instead Go of ahead. celebrating my birthday. So well, I, don't, I feel I kind of manifested the day. So, and the property we're looking at is, is you know, it's not it doesn't have to be purchased right away, but we're thinking of wanting to get into the country and having our own place, and right. you know, the, our finances are all tied up into that, and it's kind of holding us right. back from moving well, away. I think that you're going to get your money. I just think that it's going to happen after Jupiter goes direct and then hits your Pluto. Or actually, okay. I take it back, after it goes direct. It's not going to hit your Pluto. That's an- it's just it's a visual uh, anomaly of my computer program because of how they're situated. It looks like it's going to hit your Pluto. It's actually already past your Pluto and won't touch your Pluto again. But when it goes direct, it will shift the energy. And Jupiter getting to Libra is going to be a really fortunate aspect for you too. So Jupiter hitting Libra is September 9th. And but Jupiter okay. going direct on on May 9th, it's in your house of legalities. So um, okay. I think that that is well, yeah, going to make a shift financially for you. Pardon me? It could take a, yeah, it would probably take a month or two before. Yeah. She's always she's really good about postponing things, so she would probably figure out a way to postpone something. <laughs> something well, I mean, I Go ahead. I wouldn't put it, like I said, I just wouldn't put it past her. She's right. postponed this for two and a half years, so. Oh, my gosh. But that's okay, as long as it's done, done, done. Yeah, it's been going it on will. since December 2012. You know, and yeah, Mark um, and I both started new jobs recently, and our, fine, you know, it seems like a lot of positive things are flowing finally. Yeah. And so he started a new job, I started a new job, and uh, we'll see. And now we're hoping to just maybe find a, an investment property that has some rental cabins that we can maybe make that as a side business moving forward. Right. Uh huh. Yeah, so that's our vision. Well, and it may you've not got a be good vision. Property. Maybe, <laughs> maybe yeah. another piece of property. We we do rent from one of her best friends, and we're we both we've been saying we kind of don't want to contribute financially to anybody with that energy anymore. Uh-huh. So that's uh-huh. kind of when you said that she's connected to your house. That yeah, she kind of is. She yeah. found this house for us, and she's the one who referred us to this this place. So, Wow. Yeah. Well, so I just want to say Jupiter, when it goes direct, is going to be exactly in trying to Pluto transiting your first house. And for the day mm-hmm. of the hearing, you've got Pluto in the first, and Pluto rules legalities. And if it's in your first house, it's, you know, that, that energy is on your side. Like, it, it the change oh, good. is there with you, but it could also mean that there's some change in how you have to deal with the dogma of the situation. So um, it'll be interesting to see how it it plays out because Jupiter is up there in your house of joint finances. So Jupiter is always lucky. It just right now it's retrograde. So if she does postpone, honestly, it could be to your benefit to wait till after May, in which case Jupiter will go forward and it'll be like, okay, forget you, moving on. Uh, With Jupiter retrograde, it's more like... um, you might have a little more stress still, but if she can postpone it, let her or whatever, it's to right. your benefit to wait till after May 9th. So even well, Mark, eight my weeks. husband, his, he has Pluto on his ascendant too. He's a Capricorn rising mm-hmm. like I am. I, right. like I that. remember. Uh-huh. Yeah, so we both have similar wheels, and so. Right. But he's a little behind me by about five degrees, I think. I'm a 13, and he's a right. eight or vice versa, like, or 16 or something. Oh, he's the other way. Oh, okay. Well, I can <laughs> tell you. That the energy of Pluto in your first house means that your ideas of how things should work are being challenged. And I think Mm -hmm. with the Capricorn, like either a Capricorn sun or a Capricorn rising, it's really uncomfortable because the fact that Capricorn is a very staunch, this is the way it should be done kind of energy, they don't want to change. So having Pluto there saying, no, it's time to change. If you go with the change, you're going to be happier because that's what it's meant for. So the stress and pain comes from when you don't accept the shift. 
you know? Right. We're, we're, so, we're okay with change. We're, we're flowing. Okay. Well, and you've got yeah. Jupiter and Aquarius right there next to your Saturn, so it's going to be a really strong – I think I told you this before, too, that when Pluto gets to about um, – 28 degrees it's going to be a major shift in how you see the world and how like basically you're saying i've had enough of everybody else's story and the way everybody else says things should be and now i'm going to go do my own thing and that's really what Mm -hmm. it's all about i got chills on that because pluto hits jupiter in aquarius all bets are off you're going to go live your perfect life and too bad for everybody else so awesome what does that hit again when does that um i wrote them all down so let's see Pluto hits Aquarius on March 24th, 2023, and we're in, so about, what is that, seven years from now? Seven years. that's fine. And that's interesting, because that'll be a a Saturn cycle, so Saturn right now is in uh, Sagittarius, and that means that, let's see, it'll be in Pisces, and that'll be, like, everything will come together to own that intuitive nature about money and how you want your life to be not, so what's going to happen is you're going to shift like how you look at money is going to shift from the pragmatism now always chasing the dollar to like mm. I've got this backwards. I don't want to have to chase the dollar and then I'll be happy. I want to be happy and then the money will come. And that's that right. big shift. So you're so kind 2013, of 2023. Yeah, it's that's kind of a ways down there, but um, Saturn will go into Capricorn in 2017, at the end of 2017, and throughout 2018, Saturn will be in Capricorn, and then when it goes into Aquarius, which is also another big key time for you, March 22nd, 2020. So, you know, in a short four years, you're going to have, well, we're going to go through this whole, you know, authoritarian thing, and I, I don't look forward to that because when Saturn goes into Capricorn, it wants to make every, it wants to have charge of everything. And it's like, Oh, this is Mm -hmm. my way. And we're going to do it this way. And it tends to get a little dogmatic and say, now we're going to do this or that. Whereas, um, when Saturn goes into Aquarius, it's like, okay, now everybody's rising up saying, no, you need to leave me alone. I can handle my own life. And that's when you're going to shine because at that time, um, so it's going to be right around 2020, Saturn will be right on. You'll have your second Saturn return, and then it's going to go into Jupiter. So, like, all the stress you get from the Saturn return is going to be followed by this amazing, like, enlightenment era. You know, it's going to be like, awesome. Oh, and everything will fall into place because you'll have Saturn on Jupiter saying, own your fortune, own your power, and your intellect, and that's what it wants you to do. So it's going to be pretty phenomenal awesome. for you. Yeah. Awesome. So, Love yeah, it. anyway. Awesome. Awesome. <laughs> Good. I look so, forward to that, and I'll I'll send you a little IM message or something when this after next yeah. week to see what happens. Yeah, please do because he, you know, the Pluto in your first house makes me wonder what's going to happen because it could theoretically be that uh, the power and control is on your side, which Pluto and Capricorn is, or it could mean that you're going to get what you want, but you have some major change in how you look at the situation to deal with it. But definitely I think the fortune is coming. You just have to wait till after Jupiter goes direct and that's May ninth. Yep. So Jupiter expands. Yeah, it'll expand and when after May ninth, I think really what I think is that it's probably gonna shift and change somehow that you don't have control over and that ultimately it'll align for that May ninth shift and then you're gonna get your money and be like, Wow, I can't believe it. This all happened. It came to fruition and now I've got my money and it's like May Tenth, or so, you know what I mean? It'll be like, <laughs> exactly. la 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 la, unfold, and it's just going to all come awesome. together that way for you. So, yeah, Sounds May perfect. is going to be a good month for you. And it rules, um, yes. early May is Sun and Taurus. So, Sun and Taurus rules money. So, I think May is probably when you'll get your money. Awesome. Okay. I'm okay with that. Awesome. Thanks, awesome. Shelly. I really appreciate You're taking welcome. my pleasure. My friend, too. Thank you. Hey, yep. thanks Bye-bye. for the call, and you take care. Let me know. Okay. Bye. Okay. And that's our show for today. Thank you so much for listening in. And please do call in next week when we will have more stuff to talk about. And happy full moon. And it's in Libra, so relationship issues. We'll talk to you next week. stopping by Astro Energy this week. If you would like to get a hold of Shelly Overton, you can get her at astrologerangel.com, on Facebook at Astro Energy, 
or Astrologer Angel. The music was provided by Kevin McLeod at Incompetech.com with additional music by Ironwood Rain. Check them out on the net at IronwoodRain.com.